Merry Christmas, welcome to week 30. It's the 23rd of December, we've got a couple of days left until Christmas, Christmas Eve, Eve I think they call this. And I'm really looking forward to Christmas, I do enjoy Christmas. It's a really nice time when everybody kind of stops for, for a few days and, and everybody's off work at the same time. And I will talk a little bit about how my week's gone after I've shown the montage video, but before that I start, wanted to start with a question again like I did uh, last week because it was brilliant looking and seeing everybody's responses to the question about weaknesses. And I wanted to start this video with a similar uh, question really. It's about how you plan your sessions. Um, I'm intrigued to know people's different approaches to this. I know some people have coaches. I know some people are really kind of adept at knowing different approaches to making training plans and kind of sticking to that stuff and knowing their long-term goals. I, I do kind of have a, a very fixed idea of where I want to be and where I want to go. And I've been reading a book recently, uh, this book here, this 80 triathlon book by Matt Fitzgerald. Matt Fitzgerald's a brilliant uh, writer. One of, my, one of my favorite books is called Racing Weight. And he's a, a really good academic, a really good coach, a really good writer. He writes with a great deal of enthusiasm and research and real world experience as well on the track and in racing land. So I'd highly recommend any book he writes. Reading through his book this week has kind of made me think a little bit more about how I actually approach my training. I've always come from a background of making sure that I do a lot of long and slow stuff and that I also do a lot of high, I mean, those has gone wonky. Hang on a minute. Let me my nose out. I think you'd agree, Rudolph has got to wear jawbreakers, right? Definitely. Is that still wonky? I don't know if it's straight or not. Anyway, so yeah, so I'm reading through 8020 at the minute has kind of really made me realize that there's this gray area where a lot of us train in this kind of, what well, he kind of refers to it as medium intensity, not, not low intensity, not high intensity. There's a particular area which he stipulates as being between 78 and 92% of your maximum heart rate. I know it's quite specific. Uh, obviously everybody's heart rate's different. Mine is naturally quite a high heart rate, but he defines it as being between 78 and 92% uh, percent of maximum heart rate. It's quick enough to get a session done fast um, without feeling like it's dragging on it feels like you're doing quite a lot of effort but it doesn't actually hurt that much and when people go out and do their long slow runs they tend to sit in this kind of gray area that really doesn't uh, make a huge amount of difference we should be training at a much lower intensity I'm going to sneeze thank you I think it's doing my head in. We should be training at a much lower intensity than that 78% of maximum heart rate, and we should be training at a much higher intensity than a 72% of maximum heart rate. Might do a slightly more in-depth review of the book and go into the principles in a bit more detail, but it has over this week, since I started to read it, really made me focus on making sure that I cut the junk out of all my sessions, that my slow runs have been slow runs. I've actually done two longer slow runs this week, and I actually don't feel like I've done an awful lot, which has kind of re resulted in me being able to run for, for nearly two hours. Uh, the, the longest kind of runs I've done for over a year since I, I, I kind of became a little bit injured. This idea of 80-20 uh, goes back quite a long way actually to the, to the sort of late 1800s, early 1900s. Wilfredo Pareto was an Italian economist and he noticed that 80% of the land in Italy was actually owned by 20% of the people that lived there. So he started to look for more parallels of 80 versus 20. And it actually seems to uh, affect an awful lot of areas of, of our world. 80% of the wealth in most countries is possessed by 20% of the population that 20% of customers uh, result in 80% of the complaints and the sales that are made by a company. Even in marketing and business, it goes a bit further than that, that uh, most advertising companies try to make sure that 80% of the publicity they put out is what we now call edutainment. It's educating, it's entertaining, and that only 20% of it is actually purely promotional. The bottom line of it all is that 80% of the effect of something comes from 20% of the cause. And that's what called Pareto's rule. And he's applied it to, to uh, running training and uh, and triathlon training because it seems to be a rule that most elite athletes seem to be using and actually the exact opposite of what most non-elite athletes seem to be doing. So that's what I've been reading up on mostly this week and my question really is how do you plan your sessions? When you go out to do your sessions what is it that goes through your mind about what it is you need to do? Do you write your own plans? Do you have a coach? Uh, do you have a uh, do you just have a very ad hoc approach to how you do things in terms of just uh, making it up as you go along? Do you purposely avoid certain sessions? Uh, do you tend to do all of your stuff as long, slow runs? And how do you know that they're actually slow enough? Uh, do you tend to do an awful lot of intensity stuff? So I'm intrigued to know what you guys think uh, and how you approach your training over this week. And like I say, highly recommend Matt Fitzgerald's 80-20 triathlon book uh, to anyone looking to maximize what you're doing with your training and cutting the, uh, the junk as much as you can out of what it is you've got. 
So here's a brief montage video of my training that's gone this week and I'll uh, recap it very briefly in a minute and see how my improvements go. Okay, sorry, I had to lose the uh, the nose. It's, uh, it's making my nose hurt a little bit. Anyway, the Oakley stay. This has been a good week this week. I've managed to do 11 hours of training this week without an awful lot of effort. As I said previously before the montage, I've actually cut back on the amount of intensity that I do in terms of the longer efforts. So I've been doing some really, really slow stuff this week and it's resulted in me being able to bump up my hours quite easily. That said, my intensity efforts have been much higher this week in terms of the shorter, uh, more intensive stuff that I've been doing. I've been really going for it. So I'll give you some numbers this week. I weighed myself earlier this week and I've managed to get down to just under 94 kilos. Bearing in mind five weeks ago, I was at around about 103 kilos. Uh, that's a pretty good improvement. Improvement. I'm quite happy with the way that's going. I'm hoping to uh, be under the 90 kilo mark early in January. The nutrition's been going well. My top tip this Christmas for, for the obviously Christmas time is a bit of a nightmare for eating food and um, having all the treats that we all want to have. I took a bit of a leaf out of a guy called Triathlon Taron who's on YouTube, has millions of followers I think, or certainly in the high hundreds of thousands. He's a brilliant vlogger. And one of the bits of advice he used was that over the Christmas period, just only eat what you want to eat and enjoy yourself. Have what you want when you want to have it, but only do that when you get invited out to other people's houses. Uh, well, I think last week we went out three times. I think this week so far we've been out three times. And I have actually stuck to that rule. I've just eaten um, what I've wanted to eat, cheese and crackers and biscuits and, and chocolate and all those really nice, enjoyable things. And uh, I've only ever had those at other people's houses when we've been out. And actually I have found that I haven't eaten a great deal of it. I haven't really kind of filled my face too much with it all. Uh, so it's been quite good so far this Christmas and uh, I've managed to stick to it. So we'll see what happens with the weight but that's coming down really steadily. My CTL, which I kind of seem to be referencing at the moment, my chronic training load from Training Peaks, is now up to 46. Last week it was at 38, so there's a really good steady progression there. And again, the spread of time and distance and everything that I've been doing over uh, the three disciplines has been really good. I've really enjoyed it this week. I've done uh, three hours of running. I've done just under six hours of bike riding and, and about two hours of, of swimming. And the, the intensity of all those things has either, either been super slow uh, or really high intensive kind of super speedy work. So uh, yeah, it's been really good progression. I've got another week of this to go, although Christmas Day's tucked up in there somehow. So I think those longer sessions are gonna have to become even longer. I won't be able to do so many. I think I've done something like a, a 11 or, or 12 different sessions this week. I'm gonna need to cut those back because of uh, the amount of time over Christmas, but I will be doing longer sessions instead of more sessions this week. And then I have a rest week. So we'll see how all that goes. Please don't forget to have a look at the question that I'm posing here about how you plan your sessions. I'll put more of a detailed uh, question in below. Uh, please do have a look at that. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, here. And last week I also put up a, a little video I did on sweat loss during a turbo session that you can find uh, here. And also like the video if you liked it. I'll see you uh, just before the new year, next Sunday, before we head into 2019. Have a great Christmas, enjoy your training, and I'll see you in a week's time.